that will help us, enable us to understand what is this all about that God desires in our lives. Hallelujah. Always, it is the purpose and the plan of God for all of us to draw near to Him and closer to Him. In other words, He wants us to go further and further in our journey towards Him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because the world is trying the best to pull us down in that way, the worldly way. And so it is not easy as we go up in our spiritual life, in our journey, unless we seriously desire, unless we seriously want to, and this is going to be the real difficult. There are Bible verses, our persons in the Bible, that God draws them to Him. For example, God called Moses and said, Moses, I want you to come up on this mountain. Moses was already 80 years old when God called him. How many of you know that? Yeah. 80 years old, God called him for this great uh, salvation for the people of Israel from the bondage of, uh, you know, in Egypt. And uh, when they were away in, in this uh, desert, and God called Moses alone and said, I want to talk to you, Moses, come up on the mountain. So 80 plus years, Moses is, uh, imagine that Moses is climbing that mountain of God and step by step he is going high and high. It is, it is not easy as you go up. Going down is easy. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, going up is hard. Uh, if you have been to some of the Disney, uh, the Disney World rides, you know, the roller coaster rides, and first you get in and it goes tok, tok, because it's, it's hard to go up. Once you are on the top, all the way up, and suddenly you have no way to worry about it because it's going to go faster. As long as you go up, that is going to be hard. You know, it's just going to work hard to make it go to that level. And then once you are up on the top and then boom, you know, the, the experience will be different. So climbing up the uh, mountain of God in our in our day-to-day -day life is what God desires. Why He desires, you know, turn with me in your Bible to uh, some of the passages that tells us that God desired Moses to come to Him. Turn with me to uh, Exodus chapter 24. Exodus chapter 24. Uh, the Bible verses that I give, you can write it down on your, you know, pamphlet. So that you can go home and look at it and meditate upon it. You know, that is the purpose of preaching the Word of God. Preaching the Word of God is not just listen and forget about it from Monday to Saturday and then come back to church. That is not the idea. The idea is the Word of God is preached so that you can write it down and meditate the rest of the week. So that you can chew on it and grow and uh, uh, stronger in Him. In chapter 24, we find... In verse 12, this is what God said. Are you all there? Mm -hmm. Exodus 24, 12. It says, The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and stay here, and I will give you the tablets of stone, with the laws and commands I have written for their instruction. So this is the man of God. When God called him and Joshua and Moses are now uh, taking a trip on the mountain. It is not easy, but they are climbing on the mountaintop for a purpose of being with God and his presence. He said, come up to me on the mountain and stay here. So it is not just to go and say hi, high five, and come back. No, it is not. That is not the a purpose of it. The purpose of going up on the mountain in a hard way, day after day, time after time, he's climbing up, even though he is old, but yet he is climbing up for what? To stay with God's presence and stay in the presence of God so that he can listen to God, so that he can receive the blessing from God. That is why God called him to go up. 
And then there are times that you find that God is uh, calling uh, in chapter, turn with me to chapter, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 34, Deuteronomy chapter 34, you will find again that it talks about Moses, God is calling Moses to come up to him in chapter 34 verse 1. I need to change my Bible. My Bible is broken to pieces. <laughs> Look at here. It's all just crumbling. Anybody wants to buy a new Bible for the pastor? <laughs> all right. Deuteronomy chapter 34. This is what it says. It says, Then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of Pisgah, Across from Jericho, there the Lord showed him the whole land from Gilead to Dan, all of Naphtali, the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah, as for us the western seed. So what God is doing is this time that it is almost the end of the journey for Moses. Moses has been leading these people for 40 years. So from 80 age to 40 plus is 120 years already passed. That Moses is now, God is calling him again to climb up to this mountain, Moses. Because I want to show you there are times God calls us to a higher ground so that he can show visions of what he is about to do. Hallelujah. The promises, how he wants to fulfill in the future. There are times that God is calling us for the purpose of revealing what he wants to do. Amen. So here is another example. And it says that Moses climbed to the Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of Pisgah across from the Jericho. So uh, they have not gone into the territory yet. They have not taken over the territory yet. The Canaan is going to be the place for the people of Israel. But before that happened, before that is accomplished, God is calling Moses so that he can show him the vision of what God is about to do. The Bible says, without vision, people, people perish. perish. We all need to have our own vision in our life that when you pray, when you seek God, when you climb up to that uh, mountain in our spiritual life, what happens is not only God wants to talk to you, God wants to stay with His presence, God wants to bless you, but He also wants to encourage you and show you visions and dreams. Amen. So there is, a, there is a need for in our personal life to go higher in our day-to-day -day life. Let me take you to... Uh, Elijah, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 42. 1 Kings 18, 42. Here is Elijah, full of fear, running for his life, and he ran to the top of this mountain. Let me read it for you in 1 Kings 18 and 42. It says, So Ahab went off to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel. Think about it. Elijah was not a young man. Elijah also was an old man. He has been prophesying uh, to the abominations that the king uh, was doing and all the bad things that was happening. God raised Elijah to be a prophet, a powerful prophet. Now Elijah is in trouble. He is fearful. He is running for his life. And he has come to a place that God is about to do a miracle. You remember that he said that there's not going to be a rain unless I say. For three and a half years, there was no rain at all. And here comes a time for Elijah to climb back onto the mountaintop so that he can ask God to bring the rain back. So he's going up on the mountaintop. He says, so Ahab went off to, to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel. What did he do? He says he bent down to the ground, and but he put his face between his knees. He was, he was in the fear of seeking God and His presence with full heart. He humbled himself. You cannot humble 
beyond that. Think about it. He, he is just kneeling down and put his head between his knees. And that is just completely bowing before God's presence. Now he is on the mountaintop. He is looking for God to fulfill the prophecy that he has done. Until I say it, it's not going to rain now. It is about to rain and God needs to fulfill that. And just before that, Elijah is on the mountaintop. Mountaintop experience is important for us. We cannot always stay in the valley. Praise the Lord. Life is about climbing, you know, further and further in understanding who God is and receiving from God. It takes hard work. Amen. Turn with me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1. Here is an example of what Jesus is about to do. Right from the beginning of his ministry, this is what the first thing that Jesus did. In chapter 5 of Matthew's Gospel, you find this in verse 1, Matthew 5, 1. It says, Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. Think about it. Jesus, he saw a crowd and Jesus didn't say anything. And what did he do? He just started walking on the mountain. He's just going further and further on the mountainside. And all this crowd is still down in the valley. And Jesus is now on the mountainside on the top because he's climbing up on the mountain. And what did the Bible say? It says, and sat down, his disciples came to him. Think about it. Hallelujah. His disciples, the ones who really want to uh, stay with Jesus, the ones who really want to hang out with Jesus, the disciples, the one Jesus himself chose, is just going up on the mountaintop and they are just walking behind him to the mountaintop and the mountainside. It says that is why this, this teaching is called Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is inviting them to come to a higher place, to, away from the worldly situation, away from everything that can easily distract us. He is calling people to to focus on him, to come to him closer. And so what did they do? They all came to him. His disciples came to him and he began to teach. No distraction from the world around. Here is a concentration of disciples only hearing the Lord Jesus teaching them. And that is why it is important for us to take time to seek God. So why do we seek God? Why do we want it to go further and further? Because unless God touches from the inside out, we will really fail. And I wrote down this, it says, if you don't win the inside, you will lose the outside. <laughs> Think about it. If you Man. don't win the inside, you will lose the outside. A lot of people wanted to, you know, win on the outside, but that is not going to happen unless you first start winning the inside. When I talk about inside, the inner man have to be right with God. Praise the Lord. The inner man have to be fed. The inner man have to be taken care of so that he can get stronger inside. And then you will be able to see that this is going to be overflowing outside. outside. Amen. Jesus said this, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. That means the outside will come into the right place. Seeking God and inside of us that, and making ourselves uh, available to him and going to him and listening to him and allowing him to minister to us give us the dreams and visions is the place where we seek God. Seek me and you will find, find me, Bible says. So maybe the world has gone mad. You know, they are just into the worldly knowledge. They are calculating all this so that they can go away from this earth to Mars and <laughs> extraordinary planets that they are thinking that they will be able to, you know, uh, put their civilization out there because they know one day the earth is going to be, somehow it's going to be damaged. They wanted to escape from this world. Let me tell you something. 
<laughs> you cannot outrun God. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. If you go up there on the sky in the heaven, Bible yes, says, I am there. <laughs> if you take a submarine and go deep into the ocean, he is there. Hallelujah. You Amen. cannot escape from the presence of God. And so we have to have a desire in our heart to go further and further in our day-to-day -day life. If we don't go and if we stop, we will be left behind. We will be just sliding back. Think about one of the tricks to climb the mountain is don't stop. <laughs> in between, if you stop and you will look back and uh, that's not going to be a good sign. When you climb a mountain, keep focusing, focusing on upward. On. Amen. I don't know, when you climb to the mountaintop, you can sing the things in a different way. Hallelujah. Amen. Even just go there to uh, Ferndale and drive a little further into a small little mountain kind of thing there. And you park your car and look at the ocean. It is going to be entirely different. Even if you go towards Eureka and go to this, uh, uh, what do you call, table bluff. And park your car there and just stand there on a higher ground and, and the whole thing will be what? Entirely different. You can see things that you have not seen before. It is so beautiful when you go higher and higher. The same thing in our spiritual life. We cannot stay and be satisfied in one level. We have to have a hunger and desire to go higher and closer with the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Right here, I wrote down this. It says, a desire to climb. We have to have, we have to develop a desire to climb. Why? Because Bible says, apart from holiness, no one can see God. See God. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing in all of our life, in our Christian life, it's not a theology, it's not a doctrine, it's not, you know, denomination, it's not uh, a beautiful church, it is nothing. In our personal life, the most important thing we have to worry about is, how am I worrying about being li uh, living a holy life in my day-to-day -day life? Living a holy life. Why? Our one purpose is why we have to live a holy life so that we can see God. Apart from holiness, no one can see God. See God. Turn with me, the book of Hebrews, and Paul Probably Paul is writing this. We do not know whether Paul wrote it or somebody else. But we have this in our Bible in Hebrews chapter 12. If you look at it, it says this. The most important verse for all of us to understand that you cannot be a Christian and live as you please. Amen. Because there are so many people who call themselves Christian. Today, if you take a census in America... You know, uh, in the world today, 2.4 billion people say, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. But 2.4 billion of people are not walking in holiness. Praise the Lord. Amen. They're not 2.4 billion people are just walking in holiness day yes. after day, <laughs> climbing up in seeking yes. God you know, in their life. Why it is important? Because without holiness... We cannot even see God, Bible says. Let me read it for you. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. If you listen to somebody and say, you know, you can just accept Jesus and live as you like, as you please, you will still go to heaven. Lies. Amen. Right? Think about it. There are people who are preaching this. All you got to do is accept Jesus and then you are ready to, you got the ticket. No, it is not in the Bible. <coughs> is that apart from holiness, no one can see God. Amen. A desire to live a holy life, a desire to seek his presence, a desire to go up on the mountaintop. It is very important. Why? Yes. Because without holiness, no one can see God. Amen. Let me read it for you. Hebrews 12 verse 14 says this. Make every effort to live in peace with all men. Make every effort and to be holy. Think about it. Make every effort to live peace with every man. And then make every effort to be holy. Why? 
It says, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Now, the, the preaching that I'm preaching today, a lot of people may not even understand it or accept it. Do you know why? Because it is about God's desire for you and me to live a holy life. That is the main reason that Jesus came and died on the cross. Jesus did not come into this world and die on the cross so that you can, he can forgive your sins. And then you just go back into the pigsty and live like a pig <laughs> yes. and still think you are washed and cleansed. No, yeah. we have to have a desire to live a holy life. Bible says that be ye holy as I am holy. Why did God say that? God said that because that is the purpose of God calling us to come to him. Come climbing up towards him so that you can experience his presence. You can experience the blessing. You can experience the visions that God wants to give to you. Otherwise, we'll be staying in the level. If you don't win the inside, you will lose the outside. If you didn't get anything in this message, I tell you, get this. If you don't win the inside, you lose the outside. No matter. These worldly people are trying their best to win and the, climb on the corporate ladder, right? Mm -hmm. They want to study more. They want to do this, 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 and go further and further. It's good and good. But the most important thing is not that. You know why? Because anything that you accomplish in this world is going to be gone. Amen. But anything that do you do unto the Lord, it's going to stay. Jesus said this, don't, you know, hang on to your treasures on this world because thief will steal. The moth will eat. Put your treasure in heaven. What does that mean? It means that the desire that we have to develop in our lives so that we can go higher and higher in the presence of the Lord so that we can experience the holiness in our life. When Moses went to the top of the mountain and stayed there for 40 days, when he was coming down, there's something changed that happened in his life. What happened? The brightness and the glory of God begins to permeate into his life. His face was shining. He didn't even know his face was shining. Do you know that? He just entered the presence of the Lord, the cloud covered, and he was in the presence and God's talking to him just like he was talking to man face to face. And the presence and the glory of God begin to permeate into his life. And Moses comes out of this mountain and down into the valley to meet the people. And everybody just is staring at him because they saw something different. His face was shining. shining. Mm -hmm. That is what happens when you spend time in the presence of the Lord. When you spend time in seeking God. They that wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew. Renew. Something happens when you keep yourself available yes. for God. Yes. You can make yourself so busy, mm -hmm. but that is not going to cut. You know why? Because in this world, we have one life and it is going to be gone just like that. I heard the news, you know, a uh, Sikh family, uh, husband and wife and a, a few month daughter and an uncle, they were captured and killed just like that mm. in California mm. yes our life is like a vapor like a bubble right it can be snuffed out just like that so the life is so precious and we have to make use of every opportunity every time that we have with the limited time that we have we have to make it possible that we spend time in the presence of the Lord praying and seeking God is more essential. God desired that. I ask the question, is holiness even possible? Because we know God is holy. All the angels surrounding the throne of God just crying out saying what? Holy, 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 holy is the Lord. And even when Isaiah saw the vision, he said, I saw the seraph, they were just, just uh, flying above the uh, throne of God and he 
God himself was lifted high and above and the, and the glory of the Lord filled the whole temple and there are angels just crying out saying holy, holy, holy because of the presence of God. And here Isaiah fell flat down before God and said, you know what, I am undone. Mm. He was in need of the touch from the Holy One. Hallelujah. Because he, there was a desire in heart of God to change Isaiah so that he can begin to use him. Unless you allow God to touch you. Unless you allow God to, you know, touch you in such a way that you saw in Isaiah, then you cannot use it's it. useless. If you don't win the inside, you will lose the outside. You have to make sure that are you living a holy life? It is going against the grain. It is not easy, but it is important that we have to desire to go higher and higher in our day-to-day -day life. Amen. That life is called a life of sanctification. Sanctified, which means set apart for God. Amen. Set apart for God. I've been sanctified. That means what? I am set apart for God. Now, my whole body, mind, and spirit belong to God. That's why Paul says in Romans chapter 12, you know, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, what? Holy, Holy and, and acceptable to the Lord. That means we are a slave to God. How many of you know that? Yeah. You know, the moment we accepted Jesus, he bought us with a price. Paul says, that is why Paul says, my old self is being crucified with Christ. And now Amen. that I am living, it's not me living. It is Christ Hallelujah. lives in me. That kind of an understanding yes. that we need to come to. Where yeah. that we have to realize that everything that of me is of God. So I am a slave to God. Either you are a slave to the world or a slave to God. That is the best thing that can happen to anyone. To the understanding of, I am a slave to God. Anything he desires, I he will desire. do. Amen. My desire is nothing. I want his desire. That is what Jesus taught. See, we are all called Christian. Do you know what is Christian means? A Christian means a person who follows Jesus. A person who follows Jesus will do exactly what the master says. The master says that if anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself and take up the cross and what? Follow, follow me. Follow me. I'm taking you higher and higher Amen. where I can Glory. reveal myself to you, yes. where I can talk to you, mm. where I can encourage you, where I can give you about the plan, about the future. Amen. See, when you come closer and closer to God, then he begins to reveal things about who he is. See, the Moses' desire was... God, I want to see your glory. We need to have a desire like that in our life. Amen. So that, Lord, I want to know you more. I want to I want to experience that sanctification in my life. Amen. Set me apart for you alone, God. Yes. You know, when you when you allow God to set you apart from everything else, now you become an instrument for that is when God begins to make use of you. Hallelujah. Amen. Sanctification. Jesus prayed for it. Turn with me to uh, John's gospel when he was praying for, you know, for all his disciples. He is praying for you and me in chapter 17 and verse 17. This is what Jesus prayed. In my Bible, it is in red letter, which means Jesus himself uttered these words. Look at verse 17 of the John's Gospel, chapter 17. 17, 17 says, Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is the truth. Sanctify them by the truth. And your word is the truth. He's not talking about the word that we listen to other people. He's talking about the Logos himself. Who is the Logos? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and that Word become flesh. And he is talking about Jesus. 
He says, sanctify them by the truth. But who is the truth? Jesus said, I am the truth and life. And so here is Jesus praying to the Father. He said, sanctify them by the truth. And your word is the truth. That is, I am the truth. You, and let the people know that apart from me, they cannot receive and experience the sanctification and separation from this world. It is you giving yourself to the hand of God in the name of Jesus. Sanctification is understanding the truth, understanding the word. How many of you love Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. I love Jesus. You know why we have to love Jesus? Because he is beginning to reveal himself to us. He has revealed so many things to us as we draw near to him. Sometimes our difficulties drive us closer to God. Do you know that? Our difficulties drive us closer to God, to the mountain top. There are times that I climb to the mountain top to seek God. Do you know why? Because I have trouble. When I have trouble, I run to Him. Hallelujah. When I run to Him, He calls me and I go up and go up in His heart. But you take your time and run to Him because that is where you find sanctification and separation. And because the Word Himself is going to sanctify you. Jesus prayed for us. He said this in the same uh, passage. He says, sanctify them by the truth. Your Word is the truth. Look at verse 18. It says, as you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself. Do you know what Jesus did? He sanctified himself. What does that mean, Pastor? It means he stood up for that position and he stayed there. That position is the Lamb of God to be slaughtered for the sins of the world. Right? John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus walking, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that's going to take away the sins of the world. And the time he started his ministry till his death on the cross, Jesus did not flinch this way or that way. He was focused. He was completely sanctified himself for the service of the Father. He said, it is not my will. But let yes. your will be done. done. So sanctification comes. Sanctification comes when we desire the will of God in our life. And allowing Him to dominate in our life. Allowing Him to just take over our lives so that He can minister to us and change us and sanctify us for the use of Him and Him alone. As a pastor, it is my continual desire. See, Assemblies of God believes that sanctification happens from the time that you accept Jesus. You know, and you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it is further, but it's not going to stop there. Simply so believe that it is a continual work in your day to day life. You are sanctified, being sanctified, and final sanctification comes when we see Him face to face. Hallelujah. That is what it is all about. And we cannot stop in between. We cannot turn back in between. We have to keep going. The one who has started a good work Hallelujah. in you. Hallelujah. Yes. The one who has started a good work in you is faithful in taking you to further to the last moment. Hallelujah. It is important to understand. Lord, I belong to you. You saved me and set me free. You bought me with a price. And I am a slave for you. My old self is crucified. And now I live. Who I live is, is just Christ is the one who lives in me. When you recognize that, you will understand what God meant. Be holy as I am holy. God alone is holy, but he desired us to live a holy life. Praise the Lord. Amen. Holy life is not showing, you know, that you are so <laughs> spiritual. Holy life is not that wearing white dress. Some people think, you know, if I wear white and white and uh, don't smoke, don't drink, then I live a holy life. Holy life is allowing God to touch you and allowing Him to change you. What happened to Isaiah on that vision was 
the angel came and took the live coal from the altar and went and touched what? His mouth. Yeah. He said, you are living with the people who have unclean tongues. I'm going to touch you and cleanse you. That is what sanctification is all about. It is allowing God to minister to us and change us into his likeness. God began to use Isaiah after that. The, the man I love so much in the Old Testament is the prophet Isaiah. He prophesied about Messiah's coming and the life, how he's going to live. And he talked about how he's going to die. No other prophet have explained it so beautifully than Isaiah. Do you know why? Because Isaiah was sanctified and set free for the use of God in his life. It began to change because he began to hear, Who sh whom shall I send and who will go for me? And here comes Isaiah said what? Here I am. Here am I, Lord. You have touched me and I, you have changed me and I'm all yours. And God begins to pour out his vision and dreams and prophecy, everything on Isaiah. Isaiah begins to be used of God. That is what God desires in our life. That is what it means living hot for God. Hallelujah. It is not living a compromised, easy life. Christianity is a hard life because we are climbing the ladder with the help of the Holy Spirit of God. Sanctification is not our own work. Sanctification is done by the help of the Holy Spirit of God. And that is why Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans and I will send you the promised spirit. When the spirit of truth, when he comes, he will help you. He will guide you. He will take you further. You have to allow the spirit of God in your day-to-day -day life to go further in your spiritual life. Without the help of the Holy Spirit of God, you cannot take a step further. Praise the Lord. Do you know that? You cannot do it on your own. You have to allow the Spirit of God. There are Bible verses after verses that I can pinpoint and say sanctification is the work of the Holy Spirit. Turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. I'm going to finish. I have so much. <laughs> you know, I have so much. I wanted to finish, but I am not able to. Praise the Lord. Let me take you to this, okay? 1 Peter chapter 1. This is what Peter, the disciple of Jesus, the apostle Peter, wrote this in his epistle. First chapter, verse one and two, he says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ to God's elect, that is you and me, strangers in the world, scattered throughout Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, and everywhere in this world. Look at verse two, it says, who have been chosen according to his, the foreknowledge of God the Father, what? Through the sanctifying work of the Spirit. It is the sanctifying work of the Spirit that God is enabling us to go further and further. Be ye holy as I am holy. Not only in the Old Testament God said it, but in the New Testament also God said it again and again. That be ye holy as I am holy. That means even though we are not completely holy yet, we desire Him more and more, praise the Lord, to live a holy life. It is almost like this. Jesus said, you Pharisees, you wash the outside of a cup, but inside it is what? Nasty. <laughs> right? That's what Pharisees, you know, Jesus talked about Pharisees. Outside you're all that, but what about your inside? If your inside is not clean and holy, you are useless. If you don't win the inside, then you lose the outside. In our spiritual journey, just don't concern about the outside. Just be careful about the inside. Let the Holy Spirit of God continue to consume you and continue to keep you holy unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the time is going to come. Jesus is going to come and take his church. Spotless church. Praise the Lord. Do you know that that song says, what does the song say? It's a glorious church. What? With spots and wrinkles? 
No. It's a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. We, Jesus is desiring, he is giving us time after time so that we, have, we will have a desire to know him more and more and more. I pray that God will give you hunger in your heart. In your heart, hunger and thirst for his presence so that you will give him the first place. There's a blessing when you seek his kingdom and his righteousness. And everything else will fall in its place. Praise the Lord. Yes. Because today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you obey God. Let me finish. I'm going to close. I have a desire to keep going. <laughs> going. As a pastor, I wish, you know, uh, that we have service every day. <laughs> right? I wish everybody can just for, find a time to come together every day so that we can sit and study every day. But that's not going to be possible because all of you are working, I understand. But at least in your day-to-day -day life, keep God first. You know, Wednesday when we were sharing, you know, uh, God wakes you up if you, are, if you have a desire for God about 3 o'clock. How many of you know that? Okay. I, I have experienced this. I am, I am experienced still. And uh, I take all these necessary things to get a good sleep, right? Mm -hmm. I take a, a cup of milk, and sometimes I take Benadryl, and I want to sleep. And then here comes about 2 o'clock. Boom! I am up. <laughs> I am up, and I'm not able to sleep. I'm wide awake. I cannot go to sleep. So what I do, I have my Bible right there in my nightstand, and I take my Bible. I have a light on my bed, you know, that I can just move it up like this. And I sit there and open my Bible and begin to read the Word of God and begin to just meditate upon Him. Early in the morning, 3 o'clock, the whole world is just very quiet. You won't even hear a dog bark. <laughs> even the dogs are sleeping. But that is the time that God is just calling us to, to allow ourselves into his presence. Church, let us continue to walk in his ways because a day is going to come. Suddenly the Lord will show up. Mm -hmm. We cannot run for holiness at that time. Live a holy life now. Praise the Lord. Be ye holy as I am holy. I plead with you, church, to seek him Seek him more and more. I will finish this with this word. <laughs> How many of you believe that? <laughs> I will finish this word. It says, if you seek me, you will find me. Find me. If you seek me, you will find me. There needs to be a desire in us, wanting him more and more. Would you bow this morning? How is your inside? Is the fruit of the flesh dominating you? Or are you allowing this fruit of the spirit to dominate you? Is your inside clean? Is it bringing forth love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control or is the world trying to dominate you or you are falling right and left God desire you to hold on to him he wants you to dedicate your life to him and for his service there is no better thing than a loving God to use you would you ask God this morning Lord I surrender my body on the altar and I ask of you to take it and help me to be used of you. Every word that I say, let it bring glory and honor to you.